Okay, so multi-objective optimization essentially deals with this concept of a so-called design space, right? What we are saying is that in general, when you are trying to build an architecture or from an engineering point of view, you are trying to come up with a solution for a given problem, there are a number of system parameters. For example, the bandwidth, the desired throughput, let's say it's a communication system, you want at least like so many megabits per second of throughput. If it's image recognition, you want a certain degree of accuracy, right? Those are system parameters, things that you need to fulfill. At the same time, there are architecture parameters, right? What kind of processors to choose, how many of them to choose, how much memory to put into the system, what kind of connections are there between the various uh, computational modules in your system, what bandwidth and so on, right? And the number representation, floating point versus fixed point, etc. Right? All of this basically leads you to something called a solution space, a large solution space, which is sort of a multi-dimensional space, right? Uh, the number of processors could be one dimension. The type of processor could be another dimension. That's sort of a discrete dimension, right? It's not a numerical dimension, it's a discrete dimension. Uh, the amount of RAM, the type of uh, RAM chips, all of those are different dimensions. And every final choice of architecture corresponds to one point in this solution space. Right? Because I can say, okay, once I choose the type of processor, number of processors, amount of RAM, bus connections, number representation, all each one of those is narrowing it down until I finally end up with a single point in this space. And each point has multiple cost metrics. Okay, What are these cost metrics? The most common one, the one that we are typically most interested in is speed. Right? First of all, do I meet my speed requirements? Am I able to do things in real time? Secondly, it might also be that, you know, I want to do things as fast as possible. Either way, speed is almost always a very important criteria. The area occupied by your design, right, which could be either just raw area of silicon, or it could be the memory footprint, or it could be the number of chips required to build a system, the BOM, right. All of those are broadly classified as area, right. Power consumption alternatively energy, right, which determines either the heating, cooling requirements of your system, like typically cooling requirements on the system, or the battery life, right, how long can your system run on battery. Okay. Sir, and what is the difference between uh, frequency and time period? Uh, so, uh, we will get to that when we look at the examples of, uh, and even from signal processing later. The reason I take them as two different things is, I could be operating at a frequency higher than the sample rate that I need. Right? So, for example, if I am talking about a filtering application, operating on a regular DSP, right? my DSP might be running at uh, 100 megahertz, but I might be doing audio filtering where my time period between samples is only, you know, whatever, 600 microseconds or, you know, uh, some number determined by the sampling rate. So this frequency versus time period, what I mean over here is the difference between the operating frequency of the system versus the sample frequency, which I'm calling time period. I should probably have called it sample rate instead. Okay, so that's good. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, uh, you know, the bottom line, as far as cost is concerned, is of course the rupee cost, right? How much does it actually cost to build the system, build and sell the system? Okay. So all of these are costs. You might have other costs. So for example, one very common thing, especially from a uh, commercial point of view, is time to market, right? Because uh, that includes uh, and sort of uh, has an influence on all of these things that we are talking about, okay? And there could be other things like the yield, the uh, longevity of the system, how long is it going to last? Various other things can also figure in the actual metrics of cost that you're interested in. The important point is, these are typically, not always, but in many cases, they are orthogonal to each other, right? Or, well, more to the one, they are not orthogonal to each other, meaning that you cannot actually always just optimize one independent of the other, okay? So, as an example of what I mean, I mean, so, you know, intuitively you can imagine that, for example, if I want to run something faster, it's very likely that I will either need to go for a newer technology, or I will need to run something at a, you know, with a higher speed or go for the highest yield chips, which probably means the cost is going to go up, right? Or the power consumption might go up. So it's very unlikely that I can, you know, if you ask me to reduce the uh, 
operating uh, you know the, uh, or maximize the operating frequency while minimizing area and uh, the power and the cost that's pretty much not going to happen all at the same time so as an example i just want to take up uh, you know how you can compare a few implementations i am just assuming that you know there is let's say solution one i'm not telling you what kind of problem this is or even what are the units being used over here right these are some arbitrary normalized units let's just say that i have solution one which takes 10 units of time right it could be that it's operating with a system frequency if it's a system clock of 10 nanoseconds area of 20 something similarly power is 30 units okay now supposing there is another engineering team or some other uh, you know uh, somebody else uh, comes up with an, uh, another solution which has time equal to 50 right now in my case what i want is that time should be minimized area should be minimized power should be minimized so time equal to 50 is not as good as time equal to 10 similarly area equal to 30 is worse than area equal to 20 power equal to 40 is worse than power equal to 30 so it's very clear that you know solution 2 is worse than solution 1 okay so pretty much no doubts about that but what about solution 3 right now yes time is equal to 30 which means it is worse than solution 1 but area is equal to 15 right so this is better than solution 1 and similarly the power number 20 is better than solution 1 again okay so the question is which one solution 1 or solution 3 which is better okay there are multiple ways of answering this question right and there is no unique answer to it okay now one possible way of doing it is i sort of do a weighted summation i might give a weightage of you know uh, 3 to time uh, 2x to area and 5x to power right what does this mean it means that as far as i am concerned the power number is probably the most important then comes the time and then finally comes the area i'm not very concerned about the area or not as much as the other right so if i did that what i would end up with is this would come out as 30 plus 40 plus 150 uh, right which basically gives me a total of 220 okay and i apply the same over here that is to say 3x 2x and 5x i would end up with 90 30 and 100 now I really chose very bad numbers over there. I could have come up with something better, I think. Let's just say that, you know, uh, I will change this uh, power to, let's say, uh, 4x, right? And what happens with 4 is that this becomes 120, which basically means this becomes 190, okay? And with this again as 4x, what I would end up with is that this becomes 80 and this becomes 200. Remember, I want to minimize the cost. At that point, this is better. Right? But if I had chosen a different thing, like let's say for example that this was 4x, right? The time was 4x. That is, time is as important as power in this case. Right? Then suddenly I will end up with a situation where solution 3 looks better than solution 1. Okay? So I can try to give weighted uh, costs each of these metrics and come up with a single number which tells me this is the best the other way of doing it could be to say that you know uh, i have an absolute limit that you know time must be less than 10 and this is my most important uh, less than 15 and this is my most important criterion automatically that pretty much eliminates solution 3 right solution 1 is the only option okay the point i'm trying to make is there are many different ways by which you can solve this particular question of which is better which leads to something called a Pareto, uh, the concept of Pareto optimality, right? So Pareto was actually an economist in the early 20th century. Uh, you know, the, so the interesting thing is uh, there are, I mean, you know, when you refer, uh, try to find references to the actual concept of Pareto, it pretty much leads back to problems from economics from more than 100 years ago. but. For all practical purposes, the important point over here is that for us, all that we care about is how do we understand multi-objective optimization, right? And what we are saying over here is the two axes that I have drawn over here, right, are two 
axis of the solution of the cost space okay so it doesn't matter what they are in this case uh, you know previously we had time area and power but in this case maybe it's only time and power or time and area any two you uh, two of the matrix right and the red dot that i've shown over there is one solution that i have found so far right and the cost that it has is 40 units along the x axis 40 units along the y axis okay now this area in the corner out here that i have shown which is basically hatched in blue right is the so called the part that is dominated by the solution okay and what that means is any new solution that i find which has x axis and y axis such that it falls within that region is definitely worse than the solution i have found so far okay let's take another example and or rather moving forward what if later on i come up with a better example one which has 30 comma 35 right now my old solution this was my original solution and this is the new solution the new solution is clearly better on all cost fronts right a third choice that i come up with right it has 35 comma 35 this is solution 3 right this is solution 1 this is solution 2 and solution 3 in this case as i can see is it might equal solution 2 on the y axis but is still not better so as far as i am concerned solution 2 is still the best now what happens when i you know i have solution 3 out here and this is solution 4 now things are a bit tricky because solution 4 versus solution 3 i can't say which one is better right all i can say is solution 4 still sort of dominates the other two right so s1 and s2 are over here s3 dominates s1 and s2 S four also dominates S one and S two. S two dominates S one. Right? All these are correct statements to make. Right? Which are sort of helping me to identify which is the best solution so far. Right? But if I move forward, what I find is after a while, you know, I find another solution. Now I have like three points, all of which are sort of in some sense optimal to each other. i find something else which suddenly dominates both the s3 and s4 that i had earlier the number of optimal points reduces to 2 right keep going forward like this and i can add more and more points suddenly i have another situation where you know one brand new solution comes up which is better than everything i have so far but i continue finding more and more right eventually i end up with something which this red dashed line is what i'm going to call a pareto front right and what that means is this is the set of points that are pareto optimal right that are not dominated completely by any other points so you can see that any pair of points which is on the pareto optimal front right if you compare two points you will find that on at least one metric it does better than the others okay because otherwise essentially i would have said okay you know a dominates b and remove b from the picture okay so this concept of pareto optimality or the pareto front is commonly used in understanding how you know what is the sort of design space that we can explore and what are the uh, set of design solutions that we can come up with right and finally once we have the pareto optimal front it's up to the engineering team right the final architects to do a trade off analysis and say okay fine you know for our particular requirements let's say that this is the best weighted cost or this is the most important criterion and based on that we will choose one of these solutions